Welcome back everybody, this is Mr. Longo and another video on how to solve a quadratic equation. This time we're going to use the quadratic formula. I'm sure you've heard of it before, I'm sure you've seen it, maybe used it before, you may have even heard a funny song to help you memorize um, the formula. But what we're going to do in this video is we're going to specialize on how to use it and also talk about something that takes this a little bit further. Um, so you have your a, b, and c. You should remember that the standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c. So in this first equation, our a value is 1, our b value is a negative 4, and our c value is a negative 12. So to use the quadratic formula here, what we're going to do is plug in our a, b, and c first directly into the formula. So the opposite of a negative 4 is obviously a positive 4, plus or minus the square root. You're, you should always substitute your values in parentheses, so you, in this case you don't forget to square the negative. So you have um, b squared, so negative 4 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is a negative 12. And that's all over 2 times your a value of 1. So now you just have to pretty much get working. So we're going to have 4 plus or minus the square root of, this is 16, and then we have a negative 4 times 1 times a negative 12, which is a positive 48. That's all over 2. Uh, 16 plus 48 is actually 64, so 4 plus or minus the square root of 64 all over 2. And I want you to take special note of this positive number on the inside, okay? Just take a special note of the positive number. We're going to talk about that a little more later. Now this happened to work out to be a perfect square. They don't always work out to be perfect squares, but in this case it did, so hooray. The square root of 64 is 8, so we have 4 plus or minus 8 all over 2. 4 plus 8 is 12 over 2, and 4 minus 8 is a negative 4 over 2. So finally, we are done with this example. x is equal to 6 and a negative 2. I want you to go all the way back to the beginning, and remember, you could have just factored that. You could have just said x minus 6 and x plus 2. But again, the whole purpose of this video is to show you how to use the quadratic formula. So, now that you know how to use the quadratic formula, it could be used for any quadratic. You can only factor a quadratic when it's factorable. If not, you're going to need to use the quadratic formula or completing the square, okay? So, factoring is awesome only when it can be factored. If it can't, you need a backup plan. So why don't you pause the video and try this next one really quick. Just say that, you know, A is equal to 3, B is equal to 6, and C is also equal to 3, and see what happens. So pause it, give it a try, see what you can do. So you would have a negative 6 plus or minus, and then you have your 6 squared minus 4 times 3 times 3. So that's all over 2 times 3 as well. So you have negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 36 all over 6. And now I want you to again take special note to the fact that we have a negative 6 plus or minus a 0. And that of course is all over 6. Again, Square root of 0 is 0, so that's just going to go away. So you just have negative 6 over 6, and we're going to have x is equal to a negative 1. So I want you to notice that in the first example that we did, you had two real solutions. In the second one, we only have one real solution. And the difference in that is because we have a 0, which there is no such thing as a plus or minus 0. Um, on the inside of the radical. Over here, the inside was positive. That's why we had a plus or minus 8, which is why we had two solutions. So what are we going to find in this last one? 
Well, we're just going to quickly go through this last one because we've already done two examples of the quadratic formula. So this one would be 1 plus or minus the square root. Um, we're going to skip to the b squared would be 1 minus 4 times a, which is 2 times 3. And that right there all over 2 times 2, which would be 4. And we have 1 plus or minus. And over here, look, we've got um, 8, 24. So we have 1 minus 24. We have the square root of a negative 23 all over 4. Now, back in the day, remember, you did not know how to take the square root of a negative number. But now we do. But one last time. I want you to realize that the inside is now negative. So we did a positive inside, we did a zero inside, and now we're going to do a negative inside. Um, so to continue solving this, we have 1 plus or minus i root 23 all over 4. And since no fractions can be simplified here, we're actually done. That's our final answer. And now I want you to notice that you have two imaginary numbers. But that means you do not have any real solutions. Um, so using the quadratic formula is just like that, pretty simple. But the whole red circles and boxes, what I was getting at, the inside of the radical, the b squared minus 4ac, if it's positive, you will have two real solutions. And if it's 0, you will have one real solution. And if you have a negative, you have no real solutions. You actually have two imaginary. So it's important to know the difference between two real solutions versus two imaginary solutions. Okay? And we're going to apply it. Sometimes you, there are ways of answering questions without ever having to do all the work. So here's an example of Joey dropping his keys off of his balcony that's 20 feet above the ground. And he asks his friend Mark to just toss them back up to him. The equation is given is negative 16t squared plus 30t plus 4. Now that equation means the negative 16 is actually the force of gravity. 30 is how far or how fast Mark is throwing them back up to Joey at 30 feet per second. And 4 is the release height. So if he throws it at 30 feet per second, we're going to assume that his throw is accurate. How many chances will Joey have to catch the keys? So you can do this a couple of different ways. You can actually go through and solve it. You can use your graph and calculator, or you can use the discriminant. How do you use a discriminant? Well, negative 16 t squared plus 30 t plus 4 is equal to the height that the keys have to get, which is 20. That's negative 16t squared plus 30t minus 16 is now equal to 0. But we're just going to use a discriminant. The discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. So we have 30 squared minus 4 times a negative 16 times a negative 16. So, of course... 30 squared is uh, 900 minus uh, 16 times 16 is 256. 256 times 4 sounds like 1024 to me. So 900 minus 1024 is equal to negative doesn't matter. It's a negative number. It's actually negative 124. Um, but what we're getting at is the fact that it is a negative number. So without having to find the time it takes for the keys to reach the ground or find the maximum height or anything like that, we know that a negative number means that this equation actually has no real solutions. It only has two imaginary solutions. So how many chances? He's got none. Um, Mark does not throw the keys hard enough. He needs to throw it with more of a velocity of 30 feet per second because it's not even going to reach a height of 20. So you could have done that in multiple ways, but if you were to use your graphing calculator to sketch it, you would have your 20 up here, and the keys are only going to go like that. So it's never even going to reach a height of 20 feet, 
So Joey's not going to be able to catch him at all. Okay, that's just a different way around a problem. Um, it's just showing you how you could use the discriminant um, just to make your job easier. Um, but if it asks you to, you know, tell you how long it takes, then you would just have to go solve it by hand and all of that fun stuff, okay? But, um, but in this case, it's never going to reach a height of 20, and the discriminant tells you no chances. Now, if you would have had a positive number, it means you would have had two chances to catch him. You'd have the height of 20, and it would try, you would have once on the key's way up, and if he missed, once again on the way back down. All right, so that's analyzing the quadratic formula and the discriminant. This is Longo, and I'm out. See you, bye.